Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It's a Sunday, 30th of December. Countdown's on to the new year. Then it's Martin Lee here, and here's the fifth part of your year in review. This is 2018 as we look back. Normally, by the way, on a Sunday, this should be your answers to question of the week. But as I'm asking you for your EV highlight of the year, and as I've still got a little bit more of the year to review, let's do it Monday. I know, shock horror, a change of routine, but we'll. Do question of the week tomorrow, New Year's Eve, and we'll set you a new question as well, which will then actually kind of work better with Tuesdays, which is going to be the first ever prediction show that we do. Well, thank you very much to the team at myev.com. They have been busy over the holiday period. No let up for them because they're busy making the world's first marketplace about buying and selling electric cars. And purely electric cars, they won't dirty their website with fossil fuels. Uh, it's a totally free marketplace and uh, you can research EVs on there as well. If you're a newcomer to electric cars, by the way, all welcome. Everyone starts somewhere. It's a great resource to find out more about EVs. So let's look back at September and October then. And we will start with the 10th of September because I took a week off this year. And so there was no EV news for that first week of September. I know. Uh, then, though, we start on the 10th when I was back from holidays. And there was, funnily enough, an article about the best value car that you can possibly buy being a used electric vehicle. Because a lot of the depreciation had happened already and the running costs were so low. On the same day, 10th of September, the Kia Soul EV was spotted with slightly less camouflage than previously seen. Of course, now we know, all these weeks later, that the Kia Soul EV is coming in 2019 with an upgraded battery, 64 kilowatt hour battery, wowzers, big gold starter Kia for that huge battery. At the time, though, we were just excited about the possibilities. And the UK has started a consultation. Yep, that's the word. Consultation. Sorry, I slowed down there for a second. My brain went into pause. Um, about green number plates. And I believe that consultation's still ongoing. I should have, look, have to look into when that, if it was ever resolved, if it's still ongoing. It could be that EVs, or at least vehicles with a zero emission uh, score against them. So fuel cells, pure electrics, but not plug-ins. Not, uh, not plug-in hybrids, or even hybrids with a range extender, by the way, because they don't count as zero emissions. Uh, those would be granted a green plate. If that happened, by the way, it would be much easier to enforce things like where EVs are allowed to go into city centres that have got vehicle bans for car parking spaces as well. You could have legislation to say these bays are restricted for green plates. And at the moment, if you drive a fossil car and you just want to put one over on an EV driver, just stick it in the parking spot. There's no legislation in many places to actually fine that car. So green plates open up the possibility of doing that. We will uh, update you on that in the new year. On the 11th of September, it was National Drive Electric Week in the US in fact, and around the world. And if you got involved in that, I hope you had fun. On the 12th of September, Williams, a famous name in motor racing, planned to build their own batteries here in the UK. The Tesla battery uh, patent application was revealed online, which detailed how Tesla were working hard to refine their liquid cooling. And of course, you do that if you want to keep batteries cool. When do batteries get hot? under two particular circumstances. Peak performance, so it's a sign that they're pushing their batteries harder, and under peak, the, the, the internal resistance of a battery, under peak charging. Could be a sign that they're looking to raise charge speeds in the future. I think everybody would be. Those are the two reasons why you'd want to particularly keep a battery cool. Uh, Tesla addressed their paint shop bottleneck by ditching two colour options, and Avid Technology, a big technology company here in the UK that are growing very rapidly, and we featured on the podcast this year, friends of the show, uh, they increased their presence in the US, and many bits of the EV landscape, let me put it like that, even bits inside recognisable vehicles, won't necessarily have the Avid logo on, uh, but car makers, automakers, vehicle makers, go to them to get the bits inside that you can't necessarily see, and that's what they do. 
On the 13th of September, Tesla increased their battery capacity for those involved in Hurricane Florence. On the 14th of September, Audi want you to notice their charging speed amongst all the other stats for their e-tron. They were really focusing on how quickly the car would charge. They couldn't focus on 0-60, to those kind of metrics, because they were being beaten by Tesla, and still are, by the way, for those headlines. So they were going all out on, we are the quickest at charging on the 16th of September BP trialled their EV charging system called Freewire in Hammersmith in the UK on the 18th of September 300,000 Volkswagen EB EVs were planned for the new platform the MEB platform in the first year on the 19th of September What Car and Autocar published their reviews of the Kia Nero the E Nero full electric and they were very flattering reviews by the way on the 24th of September Tesla turned to their brand advocates to help deliveries. Those owners who loved the car so much, they would give up a weekend to help in the final couple of weekends of the quarter deliver those cars. Not doing the job of the Tesla specialists, but if someone wanted to sit down for an hour and ask questions about the infotainment system, the features of the Tesla, rather than uh, after that official handover is done, having those people on hand, like Ryan McCaffrey from his Ride the, R the Lightning podcast, which is one of my big recommendations if you don't listen to that podcast, then people like him on hand to just chat to future or n new owners of Model 3s. On the 25th of September this year, an upgraded Nissan ENV200. That's the vehicle that can be a panel van, it can be a minibus. It achieved 7,000 orders since they updated it. And on the, the 2019 Chevy Volt, they added a kind of weird new pedestrian warning sound. And of course, again, fast forward a few weeks, and we now that the Chevy Volt program has indeed been cancelled. The last few months of production is underway. Audi said no to stocking their e-trons at dealerships. You would only get them by ordering them online. Not discounting having cars out there, but they wouldn't just make stock and put them into, you know, at the current model where dealers buy common configurations and have them on their lot, and then you buy that car, the one that you can see. They wouldn't have just stock sitting around. On the 28th of September, Ionity, that's the charging network for Europe. They have 400 stations planned by the year 2020. At that time, in September, just 10 were online. And let me tell you, they are expanding rapidly. Back in September, I must admit I was a little sceptical because of what has to be, all the hoops that have to be jumped through, planning permission, land acquisition, expanding the grid in certain places. These are chargers that can do 350 kilowatt charge speeds, and they wanted 400 of them in the next couple of years, and they only had 10? Well, fast forward now to the end of December. And they're really coming along at quite a rate. Congratulations and well done to everybody involved in the Ionity project. Definitely spending a lot of money, but also uh, a lot of uh, effort being put in there from everyone involved. And I'm really impressed. On the 29th of September, Tesla said that they would be offering full self-driving to their employees first as a way of getting it out there and get some miles under its belt. And on the following day, the 30th of September, it was a big day. Uh, the Mercedes-Benz EQB uh, was, that's not the EQC, by the way, that's a different model. It was spied testing and rumours of 100 kilowatt hour battery capacity. And the Model 3 drive unit production hit 10,000 a week amongst an end of quarter push. Of course, the drive unit, by that I mean either a rear or front axle, so 10,000 a week. Doesn't mean they're making 10,000 cars a week. It was uh, a lot of them a dual motor, of course, but an amazing number. Moving on to October, and this headline of the podcast was simply Elon Settles. And he settled with the SEC, and everybody moved on. On the 2nd of October, 40% of Europeans in a survey said their next car would be an EV, and that number seems very high to me, and you know, I'm kind of fond of electric cars. 40%, uh, wow, of Europeans eyeing up EVs. On the 3rd of October, the Model 3 made an appearance at the Paris Motor Show. And on the 5th, LG Chem confirmed to be supplying EV batteries to Volkswagen from 2019. On the 7th of October, the BMW i3 range extender was not extended. They confirmed that all new future i3s of the new model would be pure battery electric vehicle only, and the range extender no longer needed, they said. Other people went, well, it might be that BMW say it's not needed. Detractors of uh, that argument, or opponents of the argument, would say, 
they were also finding it hard to meet emissions regulations, but the official party line is they didn't need the range extender anymore with a bigger battery. And on the 7th of October, first-hand experience was coming in from Tesla's delivery events from the end of the previous quarter, and it was wonderful to hear those stories. On the 9th of October, the Model 3 from Tesla was declared the safest car ever. And on the 11th of October, the 2019 Hyundai Kona Electric was introduced to the US with an official 258 mile range. On the 13th of October, 45% of Norway's new car sales were pure electric. And on the 16th of October, Tesla posted pictures online of a 1 million mile drivetrain. And it looked in very good condition. On the 22nd of October, Audi's electric SUV, the e-tron, faced a delay, but only a four-week delay, as they sorted out software issues. On the 24th of October, Dyson confirmed they would make EVs for the Asian market in Singapore, and Uber confirmed an introduction of a clean air fee, and that clean air fee applied to all London rides. And on the last podcast of the month, on the 29th of October, Tesla's semi-reservation holders said they were then told that deliveries would start in 2020 of their new Tesla semi-trucks. So maybe I've brought back some memories there. Maybe you've been reminded about a few things. Maybe a few things that you heard for the first time. Well... If that's the case, join in with this week's question of the week. Like we say, we'll answer that tomorrow on New Year's Eve show. Thanks to myev.com, they set the question of the week, and it's this. Whether you're an EV owner or not, what's been your standout EV moment of the last 12 months? If you would like to email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can use the YouTube and Facebook comments or go to myev.com if you want to. Thank you very much to all of the patrons of this show. At last count, there were 150, soon to be 151, and that's big news, and I'll tell you why, on the 1st of January. Very excited about uh, partnering up with someone in January. I can say no more. But I'm super excited about it. Uh, Thank you very much to all of the patrons who make this show happen, including our premium partner, Phil Roberts from Electric Future here in the UK, EF.Energy, if you want to check out what they do. There are 341 previous shows online for free. You can subscribe and get them first and free and automatically. And, of course, whatever you use to listen to podcasts, you can hit that subscribe button and get the podcast every single day. If in return you would leave a little two-minute review, I mean, I know you're busy. Don't worry. Look, if you're busy, don't worry. If you've got time and you can leave a little one-star or a five-star review, whatever you think the podcast is worth then uh, I'd really appreciate that. But like I say, I know you're busy. If you want to check out the socials, you can do by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. For the final day of the year, I'll catch you tomorrow.